Uh, this long sequence is at the moment called Return to Work at the Wonder Factory, although that title again might change. Uh, it's, it's actually a title stolen, as frankly all of my titles are stolen. This, this one from a, a brief film made in the, in the 60s. Uh, and it has subsections, I'll do the titles as I go. I've actually, I've actually never, what's the right word, it made an account of the last poem in the sequence, although I've read it several times. It, it's called, the last poem in the sequence is called Long-Term Capital Management. Almost all the poems in the new book are about the collapse of the financial system, but what's puzzling, I'm not sure puzzling is the right word, what's sort of fucked up is that I started writing this series about four years ago when this financial system had not yet collapsed. Uh, and I thought I was, I was really capturing something in mid-flight. Uh, this sort of this increasingly abstract and, and, and uh, mystifying financial system that, that sort of moved around the globe and seemed to involve us or not involve us and we couldn't really tell. And, and I really sort of thought, well, it's, it's impossible to know about or to, to grasp or have any feeling for it. So I'll try and use poems to get, a, get some kind of access to it. And then sometime while I was writing these poems, of, of course, everything changed completely, which is to say it became utterly like all the newspaper was about. This thing that I thought you could, you could never understand. Uh, and can never have any feeling for it, turned out to be all we understood or had, had feeling for, or at, at least tried to. Uh, Long-term capital management was in many ways, I think, the one of the canaries in the coal mines of the current economic collapse. It was a hedge fund that in 1997, 1998, um, in the midst of a, of a global currency crisis, among other things, managed to fairly swiftly lose $4.2 billion, but which at the at that time, it seemed like a lot. Now we're like 4.2 billion. <laughs> but back then, it was too big to fail, as we like to say. And it, indeed, 19 different banks got together and, and uh, uh, bailed it out. Um, uh, and and that, the, uh, that series of events, of course, has been repeated on a much larger scale over the last, since March, which is when, when uh, Lehman Lehman uh, uh, So this series of poems was written starting about three years ago and moves slowly toward the present. Return to work at the Wonder Factory. Oh, opulent spring just a week away. Oh, local details so favored by poets chronicling the foot traffic of reality and all these toy sums changing hands. Oh, arctic abstractions that glow along the curve of the globe, also revered by poets. Oh, the itch to make an account of it all, to tell the story of my century and how it ended, of my friends and brawls and the Asian flu and long-term capital management, of books and books and you-know-who's beautiful language, of my century from Dada to Prada, of my century that began, in the end you were tired of this modern world. Of the century that ended when I wrote this poem on the day Jean Baudrillard died, with opulent spring just a week away. O oh, opulent spring, O oh, century, O oh, obituaries. I love noodle stands, homemade poetry books, songs no one would admit to liking, the reverie of the negative, Decrepit movie houses, Vicodin, stock market crashes, and the street signs in 15 cities. What were once facts are now feelings. Horace mentions the tears of things, and we would like to set out a bowl of milk and coax the idea into the present, into the theater of the present, Meaning flows backward from the period so the century ends before it begins. What were once facts are now feelings and so we bid farewell to the swans and manifestos and the swans and manifestos. I love the palindrome and the Ouroboros and the subway system turning back on itself. Century where I salted my heart with the money of the absolute. Envoy to Century. 
Century without Rambo, that cherubic jerk-off at the corner of the table. Century, did you have to return Rambo as Howard Hughes? Century of here I was. Century of I is an other. Of the new tiers of things. Of the new tiers of things and our dream of the subject and the object aligning. Century, can't we get over it and just start calling this the subject? City. Oh, opulent spring, just a week away. Spring where we go out into the system of systems. Go out into the nodes and the pathways and the sun green sun. Out into our city where we came to live in close contagion with beloveds and strangers and neighbors who aren't a drag and so finally became organic into our downtown, which at evening empties of people and becomes form without content. We meditate on pure form, it arouses the most poetic emotions, which turn at once to become dry motes of content. But in the day, in the sun-green sun, we encounter the latest contagions, the nerve transmissions that hold us, we speak of Lil Wayne, we speak of MIA and the new songs of cities. They're about us, as buildings are about us. In the downtown, in the opulent spring, oh, cities and the architects who invent new names for the situations, like bubble cities, and new towns, and zoom burbs. There's no shortage of names. There's no shortage of names, but basically, there have been three kinds of cities. Labyrinth, grid, sprawl. Four if you count the network. The network for which Los Angeles was the rough draft, and people lived there as they lived in the other orders, no more nor less organic and angelic. They're always of knowing. And each has its own metro system and preferred kinds of terrorism. All of these can be found in history, which keeps ending, despite annual July 4th backyard party ongoing Shea Juliana, where the anarchists huddled near the back fence in memory of public space. There I drank a drug in memory of my content, in memory of you, who might in another cycle, in a later city, feel the contagion of the poem as alone at dusk in the downtown's inky archive I felt the kind contagion of you, O oh cities, there is no city. Cinema. The world for a nickel, a knick-knack for Machno, a Malievich movie, a show of money, the money of the world, the rule of reverie, a breakaway republic of dreams, cinema is nothing, a filmsy excuse, Sand castles and player pianos, a dime for your reverie, a nickel for your negation. Cinema wants everything, the black army, the blank screen, the museum of the present, the abyss of apparatus. It was ending and it was going to end, 24 black squares a second. System. System sings from the Oikos, and this song is the epic and economy. They don't write them like that anymore. What were once facts are now feelings. What was once a vague sense of unease is now China. <laughs> Within being, we are now inside Beijing. We make our way through a thicket of signs. We make our way through buildings and stanzas and eras, inside of which it feels a certain way. What is that feeling? And can we name the metro system after it? Smeared with grime and system maps and advertisements for department stores, and we make our way through a thicket of time, time which is form before form, which we fill with linen and steel and hot money, and these are the new ages. I love you as I love time itself. Because we share the same apples 
and the Moors and Alephs, the same bricks and bad faith and Beckett, the same contagions and the charisma of the negative, though this has moved on to other stations, has moved on to HK Cinema, into Tamil Disco, into the universal newspaper of dreams, where it is writ that economy is an epic without heroes, and music is philosophy without proper names. Still, we are the words of others. We are the words of others, still unaligned, still stumbling and uncertain, having seen only the billboard for utopia. In the opulent spring, unbuttoning its shirt and still no sign of the subject. In hypnotic sex, and in the quittery flows, and in the sun-green sun, in the lonely hour of the last instance, one must be indifferently modern. Long-term capital management. The Thai bot glows briefly. Even the old 50 bot, with the chapel of Wat Ben Cham Bo Pit long since bumped but still legal, glows briefly. The rupiah glows in Indonesia, and we are skipping over the Malaysian ringgit, the Philippine peso, and the Singapore dollar, the orchid series, its bird and its ship series, the stations and the circuits between stations lighting up in a sequence so complex it's mystical. Or maybe it's like following a branching thought through the brain of it all, the system entire, which has no real name. In the most tangled complexity, one finds moments of great intimacy, where the sun shines on a friendly picture of Suharto with open collar and a jet rising reverse over Sukarno Hatta Airport and so glows the Indonesian Wupia. And the South Korean Wan 10,000 glows through the now destroyed water clock at Borugak Pavilion with moire on watermark and intaglio latent image. And then the ruble, which has been everywhere and once rubbed shoulders with Mayakovsky. The ruble grow, glows and starts to fade at the frontiers of Asia and now a pause in the series. But comes a moment in which the effigy of the Republic and the green-winged Macaw on their dusty rose perches inside the Brazilian five real note both go briefly, ever so briefly. And the peso convertible, the pride of Argentina, on which appears in gentle blue the disgraced historian who first translated Dante into Spanish, this too finally glows. And that is said to be the end of beauty. But I say there is nothing as beautiful as the Yuan. And among all the various bills with their lotuses and their halls of the people, none compares to the humble Kwai note with its orchid watermark and three pools mirroring the moon at West Lake. 